Hello, I'm Tyler. And I'm Grant. And today we're going to be talking about John Carpenter, his filmography, and we're also going to be talking a little bit about the uh, Halloween series. So, uh, Tyler, uh, where would you like to start with the discussion? Uh, let's discuss John Carpenter. Let's discuss John Carpenter. Uh, he's one of, uh, I think it's fair to say, one of our favorite directors. Oh, oh yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. I love Halloween. Uh, big fan of him. Uh, if you don't know who he is, uh, he's a cult filmmaker. Uh, he was, I would say, in his heyday. Uh, his heyday was in the late 70s and uh, the majority of the 1980s. Uh, he was mostly known for horror films, but he also made uh, sci-fi action and uh, thriller films. Uh, he was he uh, his style was very unique, and uh, I can't really think of any other director that uh, made movies like him. Uh, and uh, I really just loved his style, and he really revolutionized the industry with Halloween in 1978. Right? I still find it amazing how. He was able to pull off a film with a three hundred million, three hundred thousand dollar budget, three hundred thousand dollar budget, and make it three hundred million. That would be that would be no three hundred million would be back like, then. Oh. oh my god, <laughs> that would be like I don't even know. That's like more than like the, that's like that would be like an avatar. That's that's like that's like an avatar. I mean yeah, that's I insane. But it did yeah. It, it was like a three hundred thousand dollar budget, which was even the, which that, back then that was like, that was no. very very small. That was very, very small. small. today Shoot. it's even smaller. Uh, it's silver for. Uh, today it's even smaller, but it, it really is incredible how well made that film is. Because the thing is, even though it was and made, I mean, like it was, I I I wouldn't just say Carpenter, Dean Cundey, who was the uh, Cundy, cinematographer, the DP, was, yeah. yeah, amazing, yeah, amazing. I, uh, like, I, yeah. The shot where Michael, where uh, Lori just finds out, discovers all the bodies, she's terrified, and then. Um, Michael's lurking in the shadows. He comes out. All of a sudden, you see his face. That's oh, yeah. absolutely perfect. That was Shot. great. Yeah, per perfect and uh, I really like how, even though it's a cheaply made movie, it doesn't look cheap at all. Like it looks no, like it a, doesn't. It, it looks, looks like a high production value movie. Like considering, um, it's also got an incredible cast. Uh, Donald Pleasance, one of uh, one of the all time. I would say one of the all time great uh, movie no, no. actors. Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, um, young Jamie Lee Curtis, like mm -hmm. how she was like nineteen when this movie came out. Yeah, this was her acting debut. This was her acting debut. debut yeah. uh, daughter of Janet Lee who and Tony Curtis. Psych yeah. Who and Janet Lee, who if you don't know, played Marion Crane in Psycho. Marion Crane in the original Psycho. Victim. So it's kind of like a passing of the torch from yeah. uh, mother to daughter. It's very uh, symbolic. That's one of the reasons why Carpenter chose her actually for the film. I still find it amazing too how Carpenter and at the time his girlfriend Deborah Hill they um, yeah. picked out actors and actresses just based off of like if you auditioned basically you probably got the part they didn't really like look for very specific things no like they just picked out like oh uh, you would be a good teenager I think you could pull kind it off. of which you know that sounds kind of lazy but it really isn't you know like uh, they they let people they let them. Um, really experiment and explore themselves and they let them kind of just be themselves on the screen. Uh, I really liked, you know, I really liked uh, the girl, I can't remember her name, uh, I just know it was Lori's blonde friend. I really oh, liked her. Linda. Like, the girl was like, totally. PJ Souls, yeah. Totally. Yeah, like that Literally, girl. Yeah. She was great. Um, I really liked, I really liked the guy who played Michael Myers, I think Nick Castle. Nick Castle. Nick he defined that part. He, he is the best Myers by really, far. No, he really, uh, the way he moves and the way he just lurks around the corner and sidesteps mm -hmm. and uh, the way he like raises his hand when he stabs with the knife is so chilling uh, i mean it's it's really just it's not he's not just moving slowly if you had to pick a favorite scene in the movie favorite scene in the movie um i don't want to go into spoiler territory but i'm going to say one of my favorite scenes, uh, actually, it's really early on. It's when um, Lori's uh, baby, the the kid that Lori's babysitting, he's uh, he's he's getting out of school. He has a pumpkin, oh, and that's the it. kids break the pumpkin, and then after he picks up the pumpkin, he picks up the like the pieces of the pumpkin, and he's walking along the fence, and then you just see Michael right by the fence, and you see the music cue, and I speaking I just of the music, love that. that his music his is music's incredible. Amazing. I still like to this day. I mean, like, I still, I mean, like, I don't get scared, of course, but I absolutely adore it really, the theme where it is, it, after Lori discovers the bodies, how he's, like, It gives me goosebumps. It, gives me it is. It is very tingly. It's very, yeah, it's really, like, uh, 
The um, stalking theme is amazing. It's insane, and it's really insane how much work he did because he, uh, John Carpenter, if you don't know, he wrote, directed, produced, mm -hmm. and s m scored the film's yep. score, the musical score. So I mean, that's like that's insane. I mean, like the fact that he did all that, and also he did all that masterfully. Yeah. And um, I just uh, absolutely loved it, and um, yeah, Halloween, great film. Uh, and uh, if I were to choose my favorite scene, if you were to choose your favorite scene, yeah. Okay. I would. I would like to hear what. What's your favorite scene? I think my favorite scene. I'm entering spoiler territory, so be warned. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Um, my favorite scene is Bob's death. Bob's death. Bob's death. But when he's when he gets pinned up, when Michael oh, comes out of the closet. That's an incredible scene. He picks up Bob, puts him against the wall. The wall. In the kitchen. Yeah. In the kitchen. And he, Gets puts the knife, the knife and, it's, and, and he the sticks him. And he's I, I, I mean, like, I watched a documentary about the original Halloween, yeah. and it literally stated that um, two people were, the um, the actor who played Bob stated that two people were holding him up during that scene. Oh, yeah. And I still find it amazing. You don't even see they, they, I know, you don't even see it. It's like, they literally probably just cut it out. But yeah. But I still find it amazing how they shot that scene. Uh, the lighting, too, was amazing. Um, I would say that's that's my favorite scene besides the, the scene where uh, Lori discovers... Bodies. The bodies. That's a great. He comes one. out of the shadows, and that whole chase scene, up till the end, yeah, is that's, flawless. Yeah. I also like how um, after he kills Bob, he, because uh, the thing is, because Michael, Michael is, pretty much, even though he's an adult, he's like in his early twenties. He's basically a child. He basically has the mind. People of a have child. that. People have different opinions. About he, is, that. he is like a mind. Well, yeah, because he, yeah, he was incarcerated when he was very young. Yeah, I know. Because at the very beginning of the film, he kills his sister, and he was like, what, eight? He could have been older than, like, eight years old. I think six to eight. Six to eight. So okay. he pretty much, he was locked in a penitentiary, no education, mm -hmm. so he pretty much has the mind of a child, and after, uh, I just really, I love this part. I just, it just, I think it just shows so much about his character that right after he stabs Bob, and his, and Bob's body's, you know, in the wall, uh, on the wall with the knife through his uh, chest, and Michael just looks up and down, and he looks like, and he, he turns his head, yeah. he turns his head like a dog. He turns his head like a like a confused puppy, and it's like, he's like, did you I know, just do that? It makes you think. It makes you think. Like, does he even know what he's doing? Does he even realize yeah. the consequences of his actions? Like, is he really uh, a bloodthirsty killer, or is he just misunderstood? How are we forgetting this scene though? I just remembered another scene. Yeah. Donald Pleasance's I speech. Oh yeah. As Doctor Loomis. That's too. incredible too. The uh, sheriff, sheriff. To Brackett. the sheriff. Oh yeah, it's like he has. I can't remember the quote. <laughs> what was it like? Uh, he's purely and he's pure evil. You know, he he's like he's kind of like he's actually kind of like he reminds the me. Blackest eyes, eyes. The devil's eyes. He actually reminds me a lot of uh, the Terminator because he's like, uh, un he's just unstoppable. You can't reason with him. He, you know, he always keeps getting back up. Uh, when you, I mean, that's pretty much. But that was the first, though. I think for it was first. No, no, Halloween was first. Halloween was like six years. No, I'm saying like the first for like a killer that would never die. Yeah, yeah. That was like it was. Immortal. Oh yeah, because like every other uh, movie, like like in every other horror movie up to that point, like the pretty much always the monster died. Like or like he would get caught. Or you like get caught. caught. Yeah, in Psycho, he got caught. Or. Um, in like pretty much every Dracula, Dra Dracula movie, Dracula gets defeated. Or Frankenstein, he gets defeated. This is the one. Uh, this was one of the first horror movies where the villain gets away. I mean, he doesn't get caught and he doesn't die. And it's. Uh, I mean, the ending. I love the ending. I love absolutely. I still remember. Um, I think. Love the ending to death. According to the on one of the. Uh, I think the ending is the scariest part of the film. Honestly. Yeah. No. I know because he could be anywhere. He could be anywhere. And like, that's what that's what scares most of the audience. He, just, he could he, be like. He, Anywhere. This is obviously like, spoiler territory, but he shoots, uh, Dr. Loomis shoots Michael, I think, six, six, time. six, yeah, times. six times. Six times in the chest. I shot him six times. <laughs> he shot him six times and he won't <laughs> die. But he shot, shoots him six times and he falls off the balcony. the railing. Phantoms falls off the back the balcony. And then he goes to Lori, sees if she's okay, looks back, he's gone. He's like, and what's then the boogeyman? It just shows, and then it just has a shot of the house and you hear breathing. And it's Michael, and he just shows different Everywhere. shots. It Everywhere shows that different. He was. It shows different shots of where he was in the movie, previous locations, and he's breathing heavily, and it's like he, he, could, be he could be anywhere. He could be anywhere. He could be anywhere. It's like it, it's just 
It's insane. I, I remember, mean, I, um, according to the documentary that I saw about, about this film. I think I might have saw the same documentary. Um, it's called Halloween. I think it's, uh, I forgot what it was. Uh, I forgot what the name was. It was just a Halloween documentary. You can probably YouTube it, too. I think I found it. I think I know what you're talking anyway, about. Anyway, so what it's was Car- it relatively said, Was it re- relatively uh, recently made? Yeah, I think it was like 2011 or something. 2011? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I saw the exact... Well, it was a TV documentary. Yeah, right? no, it was. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I, I think saw it was that. on, like, PBS or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw it. It was, like, yeah. Behind the Terror or something. Yeah, yeah no, I saw that. Yeah, that was a good anyway, one. Anyway, so, um, I think Carpenter even said that. Um, what's his name? During the scene where he looks off the balcony and he sees that Michael's gone, um, Carpenter said that, uh, what's his name? Donald Pleasance comes up, came up to him, and he's like, okay, there's two ways that I could do this. Act surprised, or act, or act like, or act oh, like I knew what? this would I happen. I knew this would happen. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just like, he, and he, Carpenter was like, oh, uh, well, I don't really know. You could do whatever you want, but I think maybe try to do both. Try to oh, yeah, they both. shot both. And that's what shows yeah. in his thing. He's like, oh, I knew this would happen. But he knew this maybe would happen. Like, I remember he was like, kind of like, yeah. like that, and he was like, oh, I knew this would happen. Um, okay, so I think we both agree Halloween, 10 out of 10, masterpiece. Oh, one, yeah. One of, one of, oh, yeah. I, I don't think, honestly, one of, the, one of the greatest movies ever, I would say. I would oh, say. No, oh, yeah. I would, I would say, say top, this is, that's one of my, that's my favorite horror movie. Of all I time. would say, I would say top. I'm gonna say top 200 greatest films. I, I don't know about top 100, but definitely top 200. Yeah. Definitely top 200. Uh, definitely top like 20 horror movies. Oh yeah. Um, that's why. Um, and I rec- I still recommend doing this every Halloween. Watch it. Yeah, it's great.